Hi, it's Anika from Living for Later. So I was reading this morning um, Matthew chapter 21 to my children and I like whenever we're um, around this time of year to just reread, um, you know, the passages on, on the last few weeks of Jesus's life so that they can really understand why we're celebrating and not get caught up into, oh, it's about the Easter Bunny. And as fun as that is, um, I, I want them to really understand that it's all about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's all about what he did for us on the cross. So this morning I went back and I was reading to them in Matthew 21. And before I read, I just prayed and I asked the Lord to, to just reveal something to us that we perhaps had never seen before, right? Because it's so easy when you read familiar passages of scripture to say, okay, I know the facts, I know what this is, but it's amazing to me because there's always something, depending on the season of life that you're in, that, you know, familiar passage of scriptures, when you read them, new things jump out at you. So this morning did not prove to be any different. So as I was reading Matthew 21, um, it talks about how Jesus, you know, sent his disciples um, into the village to go and to get a, a donkey. And, you know, he gave them specifics in terms of what was going to happen. He said to them in verse two, go into the village over there, he said, and you will see a donkey tied there and its colt beside it. Untie them and bring them here. If anyone asks what you are doing, just say, the Lord needs them and he will immediately send them. This was done to fulfill the prophecy. And this is the prophecy. Tell the people of Israel, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey, even on a donkey's colt. And my intentions was really to read um, more of this passage this morning, but I froze and I was just so um, encouraged, and I know people have probably seen this already, but this was my first time where this was so highlighted to me um, in verse five, how it talks about that what happened at this moment was fulfilling um, the prophecy that was given. So I was curious, right? So I, I did some digging, um, actually more like Googling, and I found out that Zachariah was the one who wrote um, this passage, right? And this, this prophecy was given over five centuries um, before Jesus's birth. So that's over 500 years, right? Um, this prophecy was given even before Jesus was born. So as I was reading this, it just jumped out at me because I said it took 500 years, over 500 years for this prophecy to be fulfilled. But because God spoke it, time, didn't hinder the, the, the um, prophecy from coming to pass. And I was just so blessed by this because for me, it's sometimes I get so discouraged when I think about just um, the prophetic words that I have received, um, the different dreams that God has given me. And I, I let, let me just really get transparent here. Um, you know, all of you, most of you, I'm sure have seen my video about when I, I shaved my head and, um, you know, I was just really excited about all that God was doing in me. And oh my goodness, he's still doing so much in me and showing me so much. But I'm going to be honest, I think that um, because I had received um, different words and different promises of, from the Lord concerning my hair and its restoration, I assumed, okay, God, I've done this thing now. I've finally gotten over the shame. I'm, I'm being bold now, God. I'm showing the world myself. I really was just expecting it to happen like boom right away my hair would just grow back in all areas that it would be fully restored but that was not the point and that's still not the case right um but as i'm reading this it's like okay nika you've been waiting some years but it hasn't been 500 years right and if god speaks something that you can bank on the fact that um, it will come to pass, right? And God didn't give me a specific time frame of saying, you know, 2017 is when your hair is going to be restored. He just told me your hair will be restored. And I was just expecting it to happen like uh, now, like today, Lord, right? But it didn't. And, you know, I've had dips and no oh, highs and dips and highs um, with my emotions, but this encouraged me again because, um, 
though you know um the prophecies that the lord has given me it's not about the savior coming but it's still his word nevertheless his personal word to me and it's something that's worth holding on to and not to let time um um make me um become suspicious of god or, or begin to accuse god or, or become angry with god and saying you spoke this thing to me why is not it come to pass but more okay god as i am waiting Teach me how to wait with such confidence, knowing with certainty, number one, that you have spoken it. And if I know with certainty that you've spoken it, that it will come to pass and that I should be patient, right? And that's a whole nother video about just being patient as you're waiting for the promise to manifest. But just like we see here in Matthew 21, that even though Zechariah gave this prophecy over 500 years before Jesus was even born, at this given moment, the prophecy was fulfilled, right? Down to the T. Um, uh, everything that God had spoken through, through Zach, uh, Zachariah came to pass. So for me, I just have to be encouraged and I want to encourage you. What promises have God made you? Have you pushed those promises to the side because time has passed and you um, just kind of think, you know what, God, forget it. It's not going to happen. Oh no, take those promises back out, dust them off, start declaring them, start standing on them, start believing the Lord um, to do exactly what he promised you because believe me, he, he absolutely, absolutely will. You just make sure that you're walking in obedience and doing what you need to do for that word to be fulfilled. All right. Um, you know, let me say a word of prayer with you. Father, I just thank you. I thank you, God, for just this revelation, God, and um, just just the way you made it so alive in my spirit, God. And I pray, God, for those that are watching, God, this video, Father, that you would just cause them, Father, to just be filled with so much confidence, God, that if you have spoken something, God, that we can um, be sure that, that, Father, that it will come to pass. I pray right now, God, that, that, that for those that have tossed the promises to the aside because of time. I pray, God, that you would reawaken those promises within them, God, and help them to be declare, God, what it is, God, that you have promised them. Help them, I pray, Father, not to be distracted by time, but to just trust, Father, that you're doing something in the process of us waiting for you to fulfill what you have spoken. So I thank you today, God, for just a greater level of faith, God, to believe you to do exactly what you've promised. I thank you, God, and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You be blessed.